Okay. Um, is that okay on the mic? Can you hear? Okay, well, um, morning, everybody. Um, I'm Dave Morty from Circle, and uh, this is Tim Schofield from Health Watch England. Um, and we're just going to talk a little bit about the project we've been doing, um, which is uh, an implementation for Health Watch England and the local health watches. And it's um, something we've been doing for about the last six months or so. Um, so, um, first of all, just a little bit of uh, background to Healthwatch uh, and, and what they're about. Um, so, it's a relatively new organisation that was uh, formed a couple of years ago, and um, it's uh, it's it's well, the consumer health champion. Um, it's, it's kind of a consumer rights organisation for the NHS. Is that, is that a fair comment? Do you want to...? Um, so, um, as Dave says, that Healthwatch was set up uh, recently um, and um, it, it is, is a, indeed a, 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 a consumer champion in health and social care. Um, it operates uh, across England. There are, in total, 148 local Healthwatch um, and um, and, uh, and, uh, and they are, I choose my words carefully, um, overseen and supported um, centrally by uh, an organisation called Health Watch England. So I suppose in, in a very similar way to the, the kind of federated structure of you know, Quangos of the past and, um, you know, and, and um, also local authorities, um, they each uh, determine their own <coughs> know, um, um, way of doing things uh, in accordance with a, a sort of a defined sort of set of parameters and roadmap. Their budgets come from local authorities. So the best way I think I can describe it is, a, is as, a, as, a, as a federated structure of, of local health watch, um, uh, essentially champions. Their role is to um, uh, act as the consumer champion for people with problems and issues uh, that they have uh, within health and social care. So predominantly people who have had a problem uh, uh, complaining about uh, services that they've received in hospital or, or with a GP uh, or perhaps a, a family member who, um, who um, is, in, is in care, is in social care um, and Health Watch um, basically receive Complaints and also, also observations. Uh, typically, these are done uh, either face to face on outreach within, for example, a hospital, um, or, or or by receiving telephone calls and that sort of thing. So that's the that's the that's the sort of uh, organisation itself. As I say, 148 with Health Watch England sort of at the centre, um, collecting evidence and insight. So when people call in. Um, they will, they, they will, they will give quite a lot of detail about the, you know, the, the, the problems and situations that they find themselves in, and um, that information, um, uh, you know, if shared, can be very valuable, uh, at, at both a local and a national level, in terms of gathering insight into, um, you know, sort of common problems, and uh, um, and then, you know, through engagement with politicians. Uh, local champions, you know, things hopefully can change in a, in a general sense. A national network to share information and um, you know, the national perspective is fed also by, by local insight. So, so gathering of information at the local level can be used by uh, an intelligence department centrally um, to uh, inform, pol uh, inform and, and, and shape policy. Okay, so um, when we came to this, uh, there were some existing systems in place somewhere, um, and, and with all these different organisations, uh, there's quite a range of there was quite a range of stuff uh, in place. Um, there was a there was a bespoke uh, system, which was 
essentially for the local health watches to submit their stories that, that, that people have been telling them. Uh, and everybody logged into that, and that's part of a, a SharePoint, SharePoint uh, site. site with kind of information and, and, uh, and stuff on it. Um, in Healthwatch England and, and the local organisations, there was a, a, a real collection of different uh, spreadsheets all, all over the place, um, access databases, um, and um, things that people had put in place themselves, things that they'd maybe inherited from some previous uh, structure that, that had kind of taken over the, uh, the, the health watch contracts as they came up. Um, uh, in, in some cases, that's part of a kind of local infrastructure organisation. In others, um, they, they, the contract has gone to like the Citizens Advice Bureau or, so, or something like that. So a real, uh, a real range of um, stuff. Um, so there were um, there, there were some systems where they were basically sharing health watch information with a, with another with a kind of parent organisation. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? Yes. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, in some cases, I mean, it was, it was really you know uh, a, a few spreadsheets and a, and a few notebooks and uh, you know pro probably the, the backs of some envelopes um, if we're. So, so quite a varying level uh, of sophistication, and, and also um, some health watches uh, have already gathered together and invested, um, for example, in in a, in a sales force and done some development. Uh, to fact, for it, that you know, seven uh, joined together and bought a sales force and done some configuration um, and, and and set up you know a system that serves all of their needs. Um, you know. Quite difficult barriers to entry there in terms of uh, you know sort of uh, actually getting people potentially to give that up, um, uh, and also you know the citizens advice bureau. Um, so some of these 148 um, contracts, which were all obviously set out as as contracts, um, some of them are are, are contracts that um, you know, uh, cover a, a, a number of different health watch. So, so for example, Citizens Advice Bureau will have a number. Um, there's another uh, organization, Parkwood, um, who have a number. And, and they bring their own systems with them. So, um, yeah, so, so varying levels of sophistication uh, down to, you know, at, at the very extreme end, just a collection of you know, sort of databases that people have put together for themselves on a on an ad hoc basis. Yeah, so with such a wide range of, uh, of people in there, we had to think quite carefully about what the what the process was going to be, and uh, try to you know make sure that we were kind of including uh, as many people as possible in this. Um, so uh, it was a, a very much a, an agile process uh, throughout. We were <coughs> getting ideas of what people wanted, prototyping that getting feedback um, and, um, uh, and then testing that against people's um, requirements. Um, we had, um, so we had three, three levels of uh, people during the, uh, working on the, uh, on, on the development process. Um, there, there was kind of some core partners who were, who were very deeply involved in, uh, in, in the production uh, and, and feeding into our ideas of what needed to be collected and, and how that information should be used. Um, we then had a, a what we refer to as a core pilot group, uh, and that was started off as about seven, but I think it grew seven uh, got to about ten or something. Nine. Nine. Um, and and so those organisations um, we we brought in as we as we developed uh, as we as we developed the system, we brought them in at each stage and got them to give quite structured feedback on how they saw that, uh, that part of the system working for them. Uh, and, and so they would, um, uh, you know, they would be asking us to change labels on things, put in extra things that, that you know, they felt had been missed out for their use case. Um, and, um, <clears throat> and, and then beyond that, we had a kind of wider uh, group who um, uh, 
a few times over the process were kind of shown what we've been up to and, um, and gave feedback in, in a less structured way, um, but very much kind of, um, you know, how they felt about things. Um. So, so how were these groups selected based upon the business requirements that, uh, that uh, we, were able, we, we gathered initially? Um, and also uh, upon, 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 upon size, literally. so essentially uh, those um, um, sort of uh, what are described there as partners, um, there were three groupings, one of those was Health Watch England, and they, they were basically chosen on the basis that they covered the full spectrum of business requirements, and we did this mindful of the fact that we needed to be able to cover off all of those business requirements, uh, and that uh, once it was deployed out to some of the uh, smaller health watches, uh, they might only need, you know, a, a, a smaller percentage of the of the overall available functionality. But we needed to cover them all off. So there are three of those uh, described there as partners. Uh, within the core group, we wanted um, essentially we wanted commitment. We wanted people. Health watches that were prepared to um, listen to what we were doing as we were developing, um, give feedback, validate, um, have us test ideas, you know, on, on, on their model, um, and um, you know, sort of take part in, 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 in the webinar process, basically, which we used to, to do that. And then the wider group of approximately 40 health watches uh, were people who had an interest um, in, in, in what we were doing and wanted to see what we were doing as, 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 as we were going. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we, we kind of started off with a, with a certain amount of, uh, say, top-down input, um, you know, so there were, there were some requirements that were, that were passed on from um, senior management at uh, Health Watch England, um, but actually, um, I think it's probably fair to say that most of the most of the input that we had was was more bottom up, and it and it came directly from those partners. And we we ran a series of workshops uh, with with people who uh, were in different work functions across the organisation, looking at how they needed to record things, <clears throat> what things they need, to, you know, what what fields they would need to record, and um, you know, working out whether in some cases that would be. Uh, uh, done as an activity, or in some cases that was a more complex series of interactions with people that, that needed to be represented as a case. Uh, and so that was very much um, <clears throat> the, the way that we went about that. And it was, it was you know, a series of longish, uh, longish discussions, sometimes not so long because uh, we, we were constricted by time, but uh, generally giving people enough time to, uh, to express themselves, I think. Um, uh, and so then, following those uh, following those sessions, where we where we thought we um, had a pretty good idea of you know how all these activities should be structured, we then do a, uh, as, as Tim was saying a webinar demonstration out to this uh, out to this core pilot group, um, and um, following those uh, following those demo demos, which were uh, I think fortnightly over the uh, over the summer. Um, we would um, <clears throat> we would elicit uh, pretty structured feedback uh, through web forms, asking them about specific items of not the whole system, but just the part we'd been focusing on. So the, the, the starting point was contacts. Uh, then we looked at uh, activities and, and so on. So we look at one component and really try to get that uh, pretty much right. Um, and um, yeah, as I say, with the uh, with the wider pilot group uh, as we got to uh, about halfway through the process um, we, we we did a kind of state of where we're up to uh, so that people could express any uh, any concerns they had or any thoughts that they they had about how they would like to uh, you know change that and um, Yes, all, all the way through the whole process, there was a there was a demo site, uh, and um, everybody on the pilot uh, could could log into that at any point and see 
where we were up to. So that, that, that was updated on about a, a, a weekly or fortnightly basis. Uh, the web form, I can, uh, yeah, I can show you, we can show you uh, an example of that. Um, um, yeah, and, and <clears throat> you know, so, so throughout the process, we, we would have people kind of logging in and, um, you know, giving us some comment about uh, maybe the layout or, uh, you know, the, so, some issue that, that they had with a, with a particular part of it, so. Um, and I think that process um, was, uh, I mean, it was, it was about three or four months uh, of, of, of development and feedback, and uh, it, was, it was really quite a successful process, I think. There were a couple of people involved in it here. Did you? <laughs> yes. Um, a, I think that most people found it a very energizing process because what they were able to see was um, the <coughs> results um, of, of, of what they were suggesting. Um, I like to think that we got the message across that it was and is, uh, you know, very much a, a kind of you know, frontline-led uh, piece of development. Yeah, yes, there was a, an element of top-down to it um, in terms of, um, you know, what, what the centre wanted to see. Uh, but we, 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 you know, we tried to keep that as, uh, you know, as, as a broad guideline um, and allow the frontline to to develop specifically. Um, what, what they wanted to see, so um, and it's a, a, you know, a classic agile process. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and, and I think um, it, it was my impression as well that actually having those demos was, was really useful for, um, for for people, you know, seeing that progress, um, to bringing people on board where where possibly some people were a little bit, what's all this going to mean and how's it going to be and you know. A little bit suspicious. Uh, I think as, as, as people saw the process, you know, the, the, the comments we had got more more positive to it, um, you know, as we went along. Um, so, the features that we um, that we looked at um, were obviously contacts, um, and we have a range of uh, and there's a range of contacts um, being. Uh, described on the system uh, from <coughs> service users, um, people that are relating their stories of, uh, of their experiences with the health or care service, uh, medical professionals, um, people in other related organisations, so the, the, the Health Watch uh, network, um, politicians, uh, people in the media uh, that these uh, local health watches are being approached by or approaching to get stories out as, as certain things um, happen. And so, so collecting different uh, uh, information about all of those. Volunteers. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the local <coughs> health watches are, are quite small and, and rely heavily on volunteers. And um, so there's there's quite a lot of uh, uh, discussion around that, and uh, they they can manage their volunteers through this uh, check whether they've been through certain types of training that would have allow them then to take part in, uh, in certain activities um, that they may be asked to. Um, a good example of that is um, <clears throat> the, the local health watches uh, have the power to, to go into a hospital or other uh, institution um, for, for what's called an interim view. And um, there are certain ways they have to do that, and uh, they have to request a, a time and uh, say that they're coming, and uh, then report back, and, and, and so on. So the, it's, it's important that the volunteers that might be taking part in that know all those procedures, and so that's that's all kind of logged in their um, in, in the fields. Um, there's a lot of. Uh, uh, Activity types, uh, all the kind of common ones, uh, but but in particular, um, and, and a lot of uh, a lot of the work was around uh, a type of activity which we ended up calling uh, inquiry or feedback, um, and, and this is to collect those stories of people's experiences, um, and, and this was um, th this ended up being you know quite unusual because actually a lot of uh, what CRM is about is it's 
that the sea is for some kind of contact. Um, but these activities are, are designed to be essentially anonymous um, so that people can report their, their story uh, but not be identified uh, as a result of that. And um, so we were, we, we were there trying to kind of uh, put in fields on activities that would more typically be found on uh, individuals. So we'd have on that activity um, fields about um, the, the consumer rights, um, about um, uh, demographic stuff, um, ethnicity um, and um, age, gender, um, all, all of these things might be reported on the, uh, on the activity rather than the, uh, the actual contact who's, um, who's reporting that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, as, as, well as, uh, as well as the activities, then we had quite a range of uh, situations that, uh, that were complex enough to, to have, a, I think we have about half a dozen uh, case types. And uh, these cover, for example, the entry views that we mentioned, um, where a series of uh, actions have to be logged. So you have to log the fact that you've spoken to the institution, log the fact that you've been there, log the fact that you've done your report, and, and so on. So we, we, we got the timelines for these things. Uh, and um, there, there were some, actually, um, involving uh, interactions with other organisations, attending people's events, uh, in, in the case of Health Watch England, just dealing with invitations um, is, is, is quite a complex process that, uh, that, that needed a, a series of activities in a case. Um, a, um, a, yeah, another one is um, dealing with freedom of information requests coming in, so that again there's a, there's a set procedure for that. Um, and um, <clears throat> also, uh, we had a, a one where the Department of Health would um, would send information to Health Watch England uh, for them to disseminate it out to parts of the network. So, so um, quite a, quite a range of, uh, of of cases in the system there. Um, we have events. Um, not everybody does events, but quite a lot of the, uh, particularly the local health watches, uh, run events, and those might be uh, to, uh, to engage the wider public or um, to, to, to do specific things with, with parts of their constituency. They might be organising something um, that, that's um, uh, a kind of in, informative, or it might be you know, gathering together people that they want to, uh, to, to recruit as volunteers even, so there's quite a lot range of events um, uh, and we had to kind of leave that fairly uh, fairly open really so people could um, set their own stuff up um, <clears throat> quite a few of the uh, local memberships but uh, local organizations but not all of them had membership uh, some of those to deal with volunteers um, some of them uh, as, as, a, as a kind of support network um, and that is uh, that again is, is quite varied uh, and so we've, we've, we've left that so pretty, pretty much out of the box, I think. Um, <clears throat> now, an important one, obviously, for everyone is, is mailings, because as well as gathering all this information in, uh, some, of, some of that needs to be kind of uh, sent back out to uh, a to, to wider network uh, or to, uh, to a group of uh, press contacts uh, if, if there's some kind of story um, uh, being picked up on. Um, and we ended up with a lot of custom fields. Um, <clears throat> I, think, um, I, th I think we had about 150 uh, custom fields and about um, 30 custom field sets or something. Um, so um, it's, um, and, and that was actually a lot of, uh, a lot of the work was, uh, was around getting those right for everybody and getting them into uh, <clears throat> into a, a position where it would be there would be enough there for everybody to, to do what they needed to do um, but it was still extensible enough for, uh, for people to add their own um, fields in some parts where they might want to record their own uh, their own regions um, so oh
So, um, so technically, um, the the only real um, <coughs> custom uh, work we had uh, in this was, uh, was was some push functionality, and and the idea here is that uh, the stories that the uh, the local health watches are, are collecting uh, get shared with health health watch England. Now, these might be collected. Uh, the idea is that they're collected anonymously, but they might be collected with a with a contact involved. Um, we, we can't be sure. In some cases, they might be. And so, if they are, that contact stripped out when they get when they get uh, pushed up, and it's just shown as a contact from Health Watch X. Um, um, and, and that is really um, uh, quite an important part of it because that allows Health Watch England. To, uh, to to bring all of this uh, information that's being being picked up and and spot things on a, a national level that there is actually uh, overall uh, an issue with whether it's cancer services or dentists or or uh, care in the community um, that, that they can see patterns uh, happening across the country. Um, as we said, the network is. 148. Um, we're <clears throat> we're not necessarily um, going to be. We're not actually sure whether we're going to be uh, dealing with all of those. But uh, but but we've had to plan for. You know, what if we we uh, bring all those on? Um, and so there's been a, a, you know some some thinking about hosting and um, what's required for all those. So yes, as David said, um, it's, it's a federated structure, and, and uh, the local health watches can make their own decisions about about what they choose to use. So we've had to rely upon um, you know the system selling its benefits um, to try and um, sort of uh, persuade people to use it. And um, as it stands at the moment, we've got about a third of the network who are interested, stroke keen to. Um, to join, um, and this has prompted some strategic decision making to be uh, to be um, sort of put in place around. Uh, well, you know, what, what structure do we put in place um, to take that further? Um, and um, you know, do we want to get to a position where uh, you know we make such a compelling offer that we can get all 148 um, on board? So. Uh, you know, that, that's a good position to be in because at the outset the, the planning guidelines were that we would anticipate taking probably about 25% of the network. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's already obvious that uh, you know, that, that's on target, going to be exceeded. So what do we do next? You know, every uh, success presents uh, a new challenge. Yeah, so some of the things we, we kind of really need to think about like what if you know what if it's all of them what does that mean for for our hosting environment how do, how do we handle that um, and um, the the uh, actually the solution we, we came up with was uh, that we see what we can do on one server and, and then move on to the next one rather than uh, start off with some big expensive uh, flashy system which we may not need um, you know, or we may not need all of it. So, um, so it's kind of uh, uh, grow as the uh, as as the number of rollouts grows. Um, we also had to think about you know what if uh, we're going to be maintaining 148 instances of this. Uh, we don't want to be doing 148 uh, upgrades every time there's a security release. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want to be doing one. And rolling that out to 148 because uh, each time you do an upgrade, there are, there are various uh, bits of uh, additional work. So, uh, and, and again, we're, we're uh, experimenting at the moment with uh, you know the, what's the what's the kind of most sensible number to have in a single uh, in a single Drupal tree in a single city CRM uh, instance. Um, and the other thing that's uh, that, that's been uh, that's needed quite a lot of uh, thought uh, and, and discussion is uh, security. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we, we're potentially dealing with identifiable um, uh, information, 
of, of a fairly sensitive nature, people's people's health records. Um, so we, uh, we we're obviously delivering it all over um, SSL, um, but um, <clears throat> we've had to think about you know where the data center is, um, you know who, whether the uh, the data center operator is uh, is, is fully secure. Um, and I said 27,001 uh, accredited and so on. Um, we've also had to think about uh, procedures for people using the system and, uh, and, and really that's kind of probably one of the main concerns uh, because you can, you can do all the kind of technical stuff and make your server and uh, <coughs> system all uh, nicely secure, but then people have got their uh, passwords set to password or something horrible uh, and, and you undo all that work. So uh, we've had to think about that and communications with people. Um, we, we've also had to think about uh, the, the, some, of, some of the procedures um, that, that we have in place just to discourage people from doing uh, certain things like uh, entering a contact's uh, name against uh, these stories when it's not necessary. So, so we kind of minimise the, uh, the risk of actually having uh, data that is uh, potentially uh, uh, dangerous to, to share on the system in the first place. Um, so, um, so some of the challenges that uh, we've faced doing this have been, uh, I, th I think, probably one of the one of the main ones was was really around. Keeping everyone on board, and when we when we started the uh, the, the process, uh, I think some of the uh, the communications that had happened probably this time last year had, had maybe raised some people's expectations of uh, of what was going to be delivered when. Um, <clears throat> so, as I was saying earlier, the, the kind of the process of showing people what was what was going on, I think, was quite important to to show people actually. It is happening. Uh, this is where we're up to, and um, and I think we, we had to do a series of communications uh, to to kind of you know reset people's expectations when the project was actually kicked off. Um, keeping people's um, expectations realistic um, was uh, was key. So say. I think we, we started with people thinking, well, this should have been delivered by, you know, the end of the month, and, and you've only just started. What, what's going on? So it was, it was it was resetting that to, okay, you're going to be involved. You're going to see how it's it, it's going to go. These are the these are the steps that we're going to go through, um, setting that timeline, and um, uh, and then actually we, we stuck pretty rigidly to that timeline, uh, and that was um, that was actually really helpful. Um, <clears throat> with such a, a disparate group of, uh, of people, um, we would have large urban uh, organisations and um, you know, very small um, urban organisations and others that cover the whole county. Um, so the kinds of things that they wanted to do uh, was quite different. And so one of the things that... Um, that was, you know, reasonably time-consuming for us was trying to kind of fit all those all those different requests that would come in from some feedback. Think, okay, how how does this all how does this all match? And sometimes that was saying, actually, we can't do that for, for these people. Um, and, and, and sometimes it's okay. Well, look, it would work if we just kind of reshaped it a little bit and, and made it a little bit more generic, and then and then people can uh, you know use use that in whatever way they want. Um, sometimes people wanted stuff that was just you know different from each other, um, and, and you know one person wants uh, wants it to be blue and one person wants it to be pink. Well, you you just have to sometimes say sorry, it's, it's not possible to do both. Um, but um, I, th I think we communicated that uh, as as we reacted to the. Uh, uh, to the feedback that uh, was coming in, and each time we were doing a, a, you know, the next round of um, development work. 
before we do this? I was going to say. Yeah. I, say, I think most of the challenges were what you might describe as change, transformational challenges, rather than technical challenges. And um, it was quite interesting to note that um, as soon as people saw the system and looked at the demo system and had it explained to them, um, they were very quickly sort of bought into it. Um, so uh, but most of the time-consuming stuff was around that sort of management of expectations. Um, and I think sort of showing people that, look, it was going to do 80% of what you wanted it to do. Um, but um, you know, the other 20% you, you're going to have to live with. <laughs> so it was, um, um, you, you, the time-consuming bits were around you know, sort of communicating, um, uh, yeah, managing expectations, that sort of thing. And I think that's the first thing that we'd like to say is, you know, the, the, the really, you know, really key thing we'd, we'd kind of pass on to everyone is really good communication throughout, you know, before and throughout the process uh, is, is really important. And um, uh, we, we were very fortunate uh, in, the, uh, <coughs> in the project to, to have uh, uh, Tim and his uh, people at uh, Health Watch England uh, communicating really Really clearly to the uh, to the wider network, what was going on uh, at, at all stages. I think that was really uh, really key to the success. Um, um, something that was really useful, uh, which we had to kind of um, uh, we were not able to do this because of the requirements of the uh, the, the the system at, uh, at, at where well, you're in, you're in the Department of Health um, and uh, Google Docs. <sighs> Don't like that. Um, so, but we, we, we did. I mean, there were there were things where we were just working on stuff, and it was just a lot more efficient for us to to, to be you know sharing a spreadsheet. Uh, there in London, we were in Bristol, um, and, and just to be sharing a spreadsheet on the phone, uh, updating things. Um, so we, we had to kind of work around some of those systems uh, a little bit to in order to do that. Um, but um, having shared planning documents that everybody uh, who's involved uh, can update uh, and um, you know have have always access to is uh, is really important. Um, and I think um, well we had a couple of people from Healthwatch England and um, another one of the partners uh, involved in very very early stage. Training before we really started the the project, um, they came along to training day and um, really got a, a clear idea of how the system would all work. Uh, and I think that was also a really useful um, experience because it, it just allowed us to be to be talking about stuff much more on the same uh, level, and uh, we're having much more informed discussions about uh, how how the whole process should uh, go through. Yeah, you, you can never do enough training. Um, uh, you know, it's a lesson that is relearned you know, by everyone, I think, on every project that they do. Um, and, and unfortunately, it's one of those budgets that tends to get sort of uh, seen as vulnerable, um, you know, um, by, by, by senior management. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I just can't emphasize it enough. Whatever, whatever budget there is there for training, look very, very carefully at it, um, and ensure that you, uh, you know, you, you, you think around, you know, all the different ways available to you to, to make sure that uh, you know, the, 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 the the training actually gets out there. Uh, you know, train the trainer um, is, a, is a vital sort of uh, mechanism. Uh, using, um, you know, sort of online how-to guides. Putting together webinars, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, and actually, some some of the webinars. I mean, they were kind of part demo of the system, but also you know, in, introduction to how it was all working. So there's a, there's a, there's a bit of a trade, bit of a kind of uh, training process going on. I think over the over the course of that. So. Um, documentation of stuff. I think particularly on a, a, a large project like this, um, uh, just keeping up to date, uh, and, and we got to a point actually um, 
<coughs> I should say, towards the end where um, we, were, we were asked for a load of documentation and, and it wasn't all together and uh, I, I had to uh, do some, uh, some, some slightly late nights uh, putting it all together uh, because we hadn't, you know, we hadn't rigorously uh, uh, put everything in the same place and some of it was in email still and um, uh, really useful just to, to, to be to be documenting everything that's um, you know that's been done as as it's been kind of signed off. Um, um, and I think you know you can't really say it enough. Um, just just keep it as simple as uh, as, as possible is is a really um, you know it's, it's always useful. Um, and um, we tried to do that. We didn't. Keep it that simple because I said we had 150 uh, custom fields, but um, uh, keeping things as, as, as simple as possible and keeping the interface simple um, really um, really helpful. Um, we had a, a question about uh, the, the feedback forms. I'm just going to have a quick look at uh, some stuff <coughs> like that. On so the, the system and the. the Forms if, uh, if that's useful. Take some questions. Yeah, and but if we've got any other questions, we'd be happy to, to do those. Yeah. Um, in the beginning of the thread, we were talking about uh, a lot of different databases. They were starting from uh, Access uh, and, uh, spreadsheets. Uh, did you uh, migrate the old data to the new system? Yes. So we have. <coughs> We've migrated, or, or we've set up a migration path for the uh, for the for the pre-existing central repository of stories. Um, so, well, all the local health watches were um, supposed to be <laughs> uh, submitting their stories uh, to to this system. Uh, in reality, uh, some submitted all their stories, and some didn't. Um, but but that was that was a, a pre-existing centralised system, so we, we felt we had to provide a, a path for that. Um, so so yes, uh, there's a migration of all that centrally located stuff. Um, we are having to be a little bit pragmatic about um, the health watches that haven't actually been submitted, submitting um, data onto there. Um, so what we will do is we'll go out to them and where they have data, we can easily migrate it in. Um, but, but the pragmatism um, will sort of kick in if that isn't such an easy process and they'll start, start from, we'll, you know, we'll have an implementation day and they'll start uploading through a process uh, which will be simpler than the process that they would have had to follow to upload onto the share site. So, so we'll have a mixture of some, well, most of the past data, but probably not quite all of it. Um, you touched a bit on the, the timelines there. You said it's about three to four months for the project. Yeah, so there's a, well, um, sort of an embryonic roadmap <laughs> which takes us forward. Um, probably over a period of about three years, and you know what what uh, Healthwatch England are, are looking to do is um, you know sort of create an environment where we've got you know sort of uh, uh, 148 interactive databases or CRM systems, and that we're able to move forward and start to do you know data mining, analytics, all of that sort of thing. So that's the that's the roadmap going forward. Um, in terms of actually. Um, getting health watches bought in. We're, we're probably looking at the end of um, financial year to, to kind of achieve the initial objective, which is 25-30% of local health watches. And then over the following financial year, uh, you know, a good chunk of the rest. What strategies are you planning to sort of employ to secure by Okay, so from a project perspective, um, it's demonstrating and using the demonstration model, um, um, using webinars, going out and visiting, 
um, you know, showing the system and, and, and its value. Uh, but as I think as I referred to earlier, there are a few um, sort of barriers to entry for others in the sense that a lot of people have gone down a path already and have started to um, you know, sort of do, do, do their own thing. So I think we'll have to become uh, very clear about, about what the requirements are for those homegrown systems and you know, what, 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 um, you know, what they will need to do in, in, order, you know, in terms of getting their information up onto, onto the Health Watch England um, site. Um, uh, but I think we'll have to be fairly pragmatic about um, you know, sort of, um, our objectives. So we, I, my, my own sense is we won't get 100%, um, you know, because some people have invested you know, quite large amounts of capital already in, in their own homegrown systems. But we've got to make it as attractive as possible. So it's up to Yes, yeah. Are you able to move any of your sales force into the new yeah, We're working on it. Uh, were we able, or are we able, to move any of the Salesforce users uh, onto on, on Civi? And, and my answer is that you know we're we're actually um, in the process of talking to some of those. Um, I think it's fair to say that you know the ones that have done you know quite a lot of serious configuration are going to be the harder. I mean, you know, Dave and I both sat down with with one of them, um, and it was obvious from you know the, the meeting that we had that. Uh, uh, the lady was, yeah, she knew that this system was better, but she'd invested, you know, on behalf of a number of health watches, so much money already that she was in a position where, you know, she she, you know, she could she couldn't do anything, you know, without without any any help. She um, she wasn't going to be able to go back to her board and say, <coughs> hey, we've got it wrong, we need to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Were you able to give her any figures on sort of the ongoing costs of this city system? Um, well, we, we, we weren't at that stage because decisions hadn't been made about how it would be funded uh, and, and it's, it's now looking like it's, uh, it's, it's going to be, if I should say this, <laughs> uh, if it's going to be funded uh, through Health Watch England centrally. So actually the cost, the ongoing cost for her would be nothing. Yeah. Yeah, so the cat's out of the bag. If if if, if we are to um, if we are to get 148 on board, um, we'll have to fund it centrally, um, um, which makes the decision a little bit easier. But nevertheless, even in that situation, you know she's um, she's dealing with a situation where she's got an, an, an awful lot of sunk cost in something that has been developed, and whether it's as good or not is immaterial. You know she has to go back to the people who provided the funding and say. You know, uh, yeah, okay. We've got a system that is better and is free going forward. Um, yeah, but what, what sort of payback period are we going to apply to what we've already spent? So, sorry, have, have you found that there are particular health watches that are hosted by a particular type of organisation, like a CAB or a CBS, that that's for a particular barrier? Has there been no trend? Uh, yes, the, uh, um, the, 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 there's, there has been one. Um, actually, which has been uh, we perceived initially as a barrier, uh, as a group of um, a, a group of health watches who, who had a, a sort of a developed system. Um, uh, but I think it's fair to say that um, it um, uh, it required an awful lot of attention, and it actually required a lot of uh, shall we say local super users. What type of uh, organisation hosted those health watches? Um, well, actually, I mean, it was a. It, I mean, they're called Parkwood, so um, you know, um, um, they're a, uh, a national organisation or a kind of, sort of regional stroke national organisation. Uh, what what they produced is is okay, um, but it requires an awful lot of attention and maintenance, and um, and actually requires re requires people who really know what they're doing. You know, you, you need. A, a, a strong concentration of super users, which, which uh, it's fair to say, Civi doesn't require that sort of level of uh, you know, uh, sort, 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 sort of basic use. Um, you have uh, a system where you have one hundred and forty-eight branches. Uh, how do you uh, play them? You have access to all the data input in the, in the system. 
how do you have the, uh, the rights of the users? So yeah, Dave can probably explain a bit more <coughs> about restricted views. Um, so going forward, as we as we you know start to have more uh, health watches on board, um, they'll be given restricted views of the Health Watch England site um, to be able to see what they've inputted themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, we should say that these are separate databases for, for each organisation. So, so, so the data is not going to be shared uh, between, between local health watches, uh, but some of the data is, is pushed through to the, uh, to the Health Watch England, so, so the sharing in that sense. Um, between local Health Watches, that would, that would need to be up to them, and there are, there are groups of them who, who collaborate quite closely already, uh, and I think some of those have been having discussions about whether they should or what the issues would be around them having a, a single instance between, the, I think it's about, is it six in six, South London yeah. and ten in Manchester? Uh, that, that all work quite closely. Um, that makes things a lot more difficult uh, and um, it, it possibly requires some of them changing their constitutions because of the, the, you know, the data they're collecting and... and Do you have a good idea that within the system, the system you can handle it? You can handle that. I mean, we know you can handle that because we've done that in, uh, in, in other instances. Um, so we, we've got... Um, a uh, couple of clients that have, that have got that kind of system in place, um, but um, I think that works much better where you have a uh, <clears throat> a single organisation that is more tightly tied, uh, the the local branches more tightly tied to each other than, than is the case with with Healthwatch because, um, uh, as Tim was saying, it's kind of federal or federated. Uh, system where, where they're actually really quite uh, independent from each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, also, and because of that autonomy, um, um, and of course because it, it's, it's government, you know, information security has been you know, one of our biggest challenges. Um, so what we, you know, we, we require, uh, we believe the system to be you know, compliant with everything that it should be. Um, but that's not to say that the um, local health watches can't use it in a non-compliant way. So uh, we, we need them to, you know, commit to, for example, saying, you know, we will use it, we will um, um, uh, register with the Information Commissioner, uh, the, the, the Office of the Information Commissioner. Um, we will use it in a, in a manner in which is compliant with the Data Protection Act all of those sorts of things. I mean, we know the system to be compliant, but it's, it's in the usage, and, 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 that, and, that, and that ties back into training as well, and the sorts of things that we're saying in the training sessions about, for example, um, you know, what, you, what you put into free text boxes that, that, that could be personally identifiable information, that sort of thing. So, so the question was, uh, the, the information is uh, submitted by, generally by phone call uh, and input by staff rather than through a web form. Um, not in every case, yeah. Yeah. Uh, predominantly, but not in every case. So as I say, we've got people going out into, into locations and doing uh, uh, outreach and will probably be face-to-face -face in some situations, but, but mostly on the telephone. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, sorry, the... It was a case of, but, but uh, there, there actually uh, <clears throat> there actually are web forms that can feed into to some of this. We so don't we don't have any plans at this stage for, for self serve beyond um, um, what is going on the website in terms of um, uh, sort of the basic forms. Yeah. Sorry, are you asking a question? Basic inquiry forms. Anymore? Yeah. 
approaches the CCU. Yes. Um, so so th there is a relationship. Um, you know, the CCGs. Um, um, yeah, would you like to have a word? Simon, Simon is, uh, let me introduce him, is the, is the uh, uh, Chief Executive Chair of um, Health Watch Worcestershire. Hi, yeah. Um, the only legal relationship, this worked. Yeah. yeah. The only legal relationship between us is that um, they have responsibilities to actually respond to us if we ask them for reports. If we don't report to them, they don't report to us. I feel like we're the watchdog. Don't want to use that term. We're there to make sure that they do their job. Uh, but we are not a regulator. Or we can start with a regulator. One of the issues is with CIVI is whether or not we can share information with the Care Quality Commission through CIVI. Uh, I think I'd just like to take the opportunity to say um, if you understand that, and there was a point made about trans in the transition presentation yesterday about the skill levels of senior management in the voluntary sector, I think that was the point that was being made. And if you take it that we've got 148 organisations whose skill levels vary considerably across um, the local health watch network, um, and I think we're pretty fortunate in that a member of my team has a background in IT, just happens to have a background in IT. We had a uh, high level user specification that we had drawn up for our, and we didn't regard it as a CRM system, we regarded it as a business intelligence system that we wanted. Um, but these guys, in, in sort of pulling, to, being able to deliver this to 148 di potentially different health watches, I know has been a real challenge for them both, but they've done a really good job in doing that, and what they've actually told you is actually pretty much how it's been now. Yeah. yeah. So, well done, guys. Thank you. Um, so if somebody wanted to have a look at the, uh, the, the yeah. web forms um, that we're using to uh, collect feedback, and we, we're really just asking, um, <clears throat> we're really just asking for, um, uh, for feedback on you know, the different elements of the uh, uh, of forms, but also um, uh, asking for, for information about people's uh, existing setups. So it was really, it was, it was kind of. Uh, Feedback on what we're doing, but but fact finding about people's uh, general situation, and that that again helped us, uh, you know, think about what we what we were going to need to do uh, going forward. So we, we've got questions like, you know, uh, will you need help importing your contacts? Uh, you know, what's what's the skill level in your organisation? Uh, kind of thing, um, and um, what kinds of things are you thinking of doing with your data? This was quite an early uh, early stage form, so it was it was really um, you know, trying to trying to get down into what people were, were going to be doing with it, because uh, you know, as we say, with with all these different organisations, the 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 plans that they have uh, are, are slightly different from each other. Um, and, and then just you know, feedback on layout and um, uh, and, and structure for it all. So, um, is that is that useful? Yeah. Um, as, as we went through the, the, the various things, we, we asked for kind of detail about you know the custom fields on this activity type and, and, and so on. But, uh, but we, we started off with kind of a range of, uh, uh, of background uh, information as well. Sorry, if I could just backtrack to your question, which I don't think I answered fully, um, was yes, <laughs> we got we got web forms on the website for basic inquiries, but uh, the majority of, of, of inquiries are, are are on the phone. Well, um, I see people coming in uh, at the back for tea and coffee. Um, if there are any more, um, or I don't know, any more questions? Okay. Well, thanks very much. Thank